Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives, still on industrial electronics and two, working on August 2021 question paper, which is a continuation from where we left now on question number six. So you're yeah, not going to waste much time. You're going to quickly rush through the questions and see actually what we're supposed to have or to do to answer these typical questions. So we had the first question, which is on 6.1. So on 6.1, we are given that there is an amplifier operational amplifier that has an input impedance of 600 ohms and is connected to 10 ohm speaker. Okay, as we know that a speaker, it's always an output device. So that is our R out. So I'm just going to list out the information that we are given. Okay, then we are given calculate the voltage across the speaker if the current measured may not exceed two milliamps with a gain of 40 decibels for the amplifier. All right, so what do we have actually? We have got the input impedance. So I'm just going to name out or to mention or to have uh, these listed down. So we have got the input impedance, which was 600 ohms connected to the speaker, which is the output impedance, which is actually 10 ohms. So here we've got 10 ohms. Then let's see again what we have here. Uh, if we are to check here, we are given that calculate the voltage across the speaker. Remember, I said the speaker is the output, so we need V out. So we are supposed to calculate the output voltage. We are not given. We are supposed to calculate this one. We do not know. What are we given for the meantime? We are told that if the current measured may not exceed 2 milliamps, which is the input current. So we are given the input current here. So we've got the input current of two milliamps. As we know that milli means times 10 to the power of minus three. Okay, let's move on with a gain of 40 decibels. So we are given the gain in this case. All right, so what are we going to have from this? So we are given a gain of 40 decibels. Okay, this question, they do repeat it. Uh, most of the times I've seen this question, uh, maybe we have worked this question before, but uh, I, I've seen that we have worked this question before. I can see this one. Okay, anyways, uh, let's see what we have here. Remember, we are given gain, and as we know that actually our gain is supposed to be given by the formula 10, uh, the logarithm of P out over P in. So this is P out over P in. We, we do not have P out. Okay, we can have P in because if you are given the input um, uh, con con conditions, which are enough, the resistance and the current. Here, we do not have anything, but we know that if we can calculate this output power, then we can calculate the voltage. Since we are given the resistance, we know that the output power is equivalent to V squared over R, which is the output voltage and the output impedance. So from this part, let us calculate the output power first. Since we do not have it, uh, we are going to calculate the output power from this formula. So that means there is a need from the input to calculate the input power. So the input power, uh, which is P in, is going to be taken. We have got resistance and current. So definitely power, when given resistance and current, is I squared times R, okay? Whereby our current, is two milliamps where we said milli means times 10 to the power of minus three. So we've got two times 10 to the exponent of negative three squared times the resistance of the circuit, which is 600 ohms. So this is going to enable us to calculate the power, which is the input power. Okay, so let's just put in our values here and see what we have uh, in bracket two times 10 to the exponent of uh, negative three. So this is negative three there, uh, squared. Whatever that you're going to have, we multiply by 600, which is going to be uh, two comma four times 10 to the power minus three. So this is two comma four times 10 to the power minus three watts. Remember this is input power, power is measured in watts or two comma four milliwatts. So like I said, it's going to be easier if we have this to calculate now the power output. We just have to introduce whatever that we have. NP, which is our gain of 40. So we've got a gain of 40 here, which is equal to 10, the log of P out. 
What is the P out? We do not have. That is the one that we are supposed to calculate. And P in is 2,4 times 10 to the power of minus 3. So that's what you are going to have there. All right. So as we know that this log is supposed to be in base 10. Here I'm supposed to indicate the base so that we can work out with the anti-log so that we can have uh, the value of P. Okay, so, but we've got this 10. What can we do with this 10? Let's divide by 10 both sides so that we can remove this 10, divide by 10, this can cancel. Uh, 10 into 40, that's 40 divided by 10, that's a four. So four is equivalent to the logarithm of P out over 2,4 times 10 to the power of minus three. Everything here is in base of 10. So how can we remove the base of 10? Okay, so from our laws of logarithm, we actually understand that the logarithm of A in base of B is equivalent to C. And A is equivalent to B to the exponent of C. That is the base here to the exponent of the answer, which is the power. That is the anti-log. To just remove the log, you introduce the anti-logarithm. So that means, this is your A, which is this whole expression here. So P out over uh, 2 comma 4 times 10 to the power of minus 3 is equivalent to the base to the exponent of the answer. So the base here is 10. So that's 10 to the exponent of the answer. Our answer here is 4. So it's going to be to the exponent of 4. So as you can see, for us to find P naught, this is same as over 1. So how do I remove fractions? I simply have to cross multiply. So we're going to cross multiply here and there. So that means we can have our power output because one times any number, it remains like that. So P out is equivalent to two comma four times 10 to the power of minus three times 10 to the power of four. This can actually give us uh, the output power. So P out is going to be what? Let's check from our calculator here. 2,4 times 10 to the power of minus 3, whatever that we have, we multiply to 10 to the power of 4. And that is going to give us 24 watts. So this is the output power, which is 24 watts. But that is not the question. The question was for us to calculate the voltage, which is V out, the one that we indicated here, V out. And I mentioned before that uh, from this formula, that we have here, we can actually calculate P out uh, from this formula. All we need is to substitute P out, which is the output power of 24 watts. So we're going to substitute 24 watts here, which is our output power. So 24 is equivalent to V out squared over the impedance, which is uh, that resistance across the speaker. And across the speaker, we've got 10 ohms. So that is our R out here. Take note, we've got R out, which is 10 ohms. So what can we do? Just have to cross multiply because this is same as over one. So like what we did in the previous part, we are going to cross multiply this and this and this and this. So that means we are going to have one times V out squared, which is V out squared is equal to 10 times 24. These two are multiplying each other. That is 240. So what can we do from our mathematical skills? We know that for us to remove this square, we introduce the square root both sides. By introducing the square root, definitely we are now remaining with the output voltage, which is the square root of 240. So what is the square root of 240? That is the question now. The square root of 240 is equivalent to 15,5, 15,4, 919, of which you can round off, it can be 15,492. So this is 15,492 volts. So that was the question for you guys. As you can see, yes, it needed you to play around uh, the gymnastics of mathematics for you to end up with this. Uh, you're supposed to be very good in your calculations, your logarithms from your mathematical skills there. I think it can actually help. All right. Without wasting much time, let's check the 6.2. Okay, I'm just going to remove this part a little bit. Okay, on 6.2, you are given that there is a current of 45 amps, which must be measured. All right, the meter is an internal resistance of 150 ohms. So this is the internal resistance. Um, 
Okay, and a full scale deflection of 20 milliamps. All right, so there are two things that we are actually having here. The current, which must be measured, which is the total current actually. So we got, uh, okay, so this is 6.2. So we've got the current of 45 amps. Okay, then the internal resistance of uh, 150, uh, which is actually, the, so we, we have to check. The, we are asked to calculate the shunt resist, shunt current, which means we're talking about in a shunt. So, uh, which means we do not have the, the current for the shunt here, all right? So we can play around the full scale deflection current, which we, we are given here, which is our IM of uh, 20 times 10 to the power of minus three amps. Milli means times 10 to the power of minus three. So from our formula, we actually know that the total current is supposed to be the current that we have in the shunt plus the current that we have for IM. So these two, because this is a parallel. Remember shunt guys, it's a parallel like this. So this current is going to be transposed here uh, into here from your Kirchhoff's law. We know that this current is will branch into this branch and into the other branch. That is why we have to add. But in this case, we are supposed to calculate ISH, which is the shunt current. So the shunt current, I just have to make it the subject. I need to transpose IM to the other part of the equation. So I'm going to be left with current minus IM, which is the shunt current now. So therefore our shunt current is going to be I, which is the total current of 45 amps minus IM, which is 20 times 10 to the power of minus three. So that's what we had. And from this, we can just obtain from our calculator 45 minus, uh, that's 20 times 10 to the power or to the exponent of negative three. We can have our answer from there. All right, let's close this bracket and see what you're going to have. So that is 44,98 amps. So you're gonna have 44,98 amps. So that was it to obtain two marks. So you can see, guys, it's actually uh, the easiest part that you can have. Okay, then the value of the shunt resistor. Now we are talking about the resistor in the shunt. What is the formula that we are supposed to have? Okay, in the shunt resistor, we can actually use our formula direct because we've got our formula, which states that, okay, this was 6.1, and we've got 6.22. We know that the shunt resistor is equivalent to IM times multiply resistor over the current in the shunt. And we've got all these. So it's just a matter of substituting. So as you can see, actually this was supposed to be three marks, the first one. The second one was supposed to be two marks because already everything is there. It's just a matter of substitution because IM, we have it 20 times 10 to the power of minus three. So you're gonna substitute here 20 times 10 to the exponent of negative three times RIM. We have uh, RM in this case. Let's check back. We are given that our RM here, the internal resistance is 150 ohms. So we have got that resistance. So we're going to multiply by 150 ohms over the shunt current. We calculated it before here. This is the current that we are actually working on, which is 44. 0.98. So we're going to divide by 44,98, and this will be enable us to calculate um, the value of the shunt uh, resistor, which is from our calculator. Let's see, just say put a fraction uh, 20 times 10 to the exponent of negative 3. Uh, that's negative 3 times 150 divided by 44,98. So this is 44,98 we are going to have something like 0, 0,6669. Okay, so if we round off to three decimal places, it's gonna be 0, 0,66, 0, 0, 0, 0, That is going to change to seven ohms. Remember your answer to three decimal places. So that's, uh, that is what we had. I think this formula is direct. If not, then we have to work on more questions, more revisions, more question papers. All right. The last part of the question to obtain 15 marks, which is 6.3, draw a neat labeled circuit of the ampere meter used in question 
Okay, which ampere meter is that one? Remember, it was a shunt. That is, it is in what? In parallel. So you're supposed to have a parallel connection here. All right, so let's see how our parallel connection is going to be. I indicated this before, but I'm just going to have it again uh, so that we understand it in a much better way. So this is what you're going to have in a parallel circuit. Uh, we're going to have our mod. I guess we can have this symbol, or let's just put the normal symbol that we are used to. All right, something like this. I hope you guys you are used to this diagram. All right, so like I said previously, that the current here is going to flow in, which is the total current, and that total current is going to branch into this branch and into this branch of the shunt. So we're going to have the shunt current here and the multiplier current, which is flowing through RM. So that's what we actually have. So guys, just having this diagram, we have got three marks for doing that. So these are some of the questions that you can have uh, in your final exams. And I want you guys to be used to these questions, work on more questions, revisions, and so on, so that you'll be able to take out all these 100 marks from our industrial electronics N2. So that's it guys from Amazon African Motives, working on industrial electronics N2 till we meet again.